again, and as I said earlier, it always is good to be able to sit up here and look out and see your happy faces. You know, I tell people that I sit down when I preach only because of the fact that you can't stand me. <laughs> now, I know that's not true because I think the love that you have extended to me is great. But I, I met a, a new fellow and he informed me that his dad for years was the minister of the Sanctuary of Grace up here, the United Methodist Church. And I told him that. He said, oh, my dad would have loved that. <laughs> he would have loved that. Uh, and we are real glad that you're here this morning. As far as I can remember, as far back as I can remember, even before I went into high school, I've been fascinated with the study of Satan. I don't know why. I tell people I like to know my enemy. The more you know your enemy, the more you can defeat him. And I fully realize I can't defeat Satan without the help of God and without the help of Jesus Christ. But I think the real reason why I, 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 I did the intrigue with the idea of Satan and the study of Satan is very simply the fact that what the name uh, Faust means. In German, the, if you, the, the common word, if it's just used in the language, the word Faust means fist. But when it's applied to a human being as a human, a last name, it means little imp of the devil. Now, I don't know if I've ever told you that before or not, but I think this is one of the reasons why I've been intrigued. Those of you that are know, knowledge of some of the operas, you might remember the opera Faust, who the fellow sold his soul to the devil for, uh, for fame with wine and women. He also uh, tried to get back his soul at the very end, and that was the, uh, the whole story. But down through the years, as I have studied the Bible concerning Satan, I have come to the conclusion that there are many myths, misrepresentations of Scripture. As far as Satan is concerned, the devil. And I have been wanting to write a book, and I, I, I'm, I'm too lazy to sit down at the computer and do it. But uh, I, I've been wanting to write a book on the idea of, uh, of Satan. And if I were ever to write that book, the name of the book would be The Devil, Yes, And we all realize, as we look around the world today, that the evidence of Satan, satanic activity, is present everywhere. I don't think we can escape a day without running into satanic influence somewhere, somehow, in some place. I, I, I think that we have seen a world today that is uh, being controlled by Satan. And God, the Bible preaches Satan is the God of this world, with a small g. And we realize that Satan is a powerful being. Now, my, my mind is going a whole bunch of things. I'm going to try to convince. I'm not even sure I'm going to follow my mind that I passed out this morning. But one of the things I think we need to realize is that Satan is a very powerful being. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. But he is, in my opinion, now I want you to know that this is an opinion, the fourth greatest power of the spiritual world. God the Father, and God the Son, and the Word, and God the Spirit are more powerful than what he is. Now the reason I believe that is based upon scripture in the book of Jude, for example. It says that Michael wrestled with Satan of the body of Moses. And he had to call upon the name of God in order to be able to defeat Satan. Now with that, there's three things that come to my mind. Number one, if Michael, an archangel, had to call upon God's name to be able to defeat Satan, that means that Satan is either equal to or more powerful than the archangels. Think of that just for a moment. And the second thing, if my archangel had to call upon the name of God in order to be able to defeat Satan, what about us? 
on us. How often have we allowed the influence of Satan to interfere our lives? And before you say, well, I'm a Christian, it doesn't make any difference, remember that in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, that after Peter received the blessing of, 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 of Jesus Christ and he was blessed, and he was going to be given the keys of the kingdom because of the great confession he made. Remember, down in the 21st verse, I believe it begins with the 21st verse of the 16th chapter, that Jesus began to teach the his disciples about his having to go to Jerusalem and to be killed and sacrificed. And Peter took him aside and said, don't talk about that. That's not going to happen to you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. At that time, Satan was using Peter in order to be able to keep Jesus from giving himself on the cross of power. So if Peter, as close as he was to Jesus, had to receive the blessing of the keys of the kingdom, was being used by Satan to be able to tempt Jesus Christ, we can find that many church people and many devout Christians unwarily can become a tool of Satan in some of the things that they do. I'm saying this just as a warning to us. And as we think about the power of Satan, during the temptations of Jesus Christ in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the fourth chapter, excuse me, twice Satan used his power over Jesus. First of all, he took him. The Bible says he took him. Whether it was by permission of Jesus or not, it's immaterial. Satan took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple. Satan took Jesus to a high mountain. And Satan used scripture in order to be able to do it. So we need to have kind of get a proper idea of the device and the Satan. In order to be able to endure and to overcome and to be able to live for God and through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have a list of here. He's powerful. We talked about that. He is crafty. <laughs> uh, I think Satan does the scriptures better than we do. I think Satan knows the scriptures. And he used scriptures to be able to get Jesus to sin, but Jesus did not sin. He is wise. I, I think he's uh, very smart. He, he is a sinner. Jesus said, uh, John said that he was a sinner from the beginning, John 3 8, verse John 3 8. He is a liar, John 8 44, gospel of John 8 44, because that's what Jesus said. And we need, he, he, by the way, he is already defeated. The death blow has already been given when Jesus died and on the cross and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death. But there's one scripture that has come to my mind that I think we need to explore this morning as we think about what that one he is. It's Genesis, the third chapter. After God created all things, and I believe the Bible is exactly right as far as what God said. The Bible says that Satan was more beautiful, more uh, cunning than all of the beasts of the field. Now some people believe, and it's in the Holy Spirit of the Bible, that uh, because of that, by the way, it's not in the notes I'm giving you, this is extra. I'm not going to charge you for this, this is extra. And we, we need to realize that some people believe that the most beautiful animal that God created was is the serpent. And Satan used the serpent to be able to attempt Eve. I don't think the serpent was Eve, uh, Satan. But he came to Eve and asked him, Can you eat all the tree, trees of the tree, uh, uh, in the garden? See, he said, All but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, Because if we eat that, we're surely going to die. I think you all know the scripture. Satan used two lies to be able to deceive Eve. And I want to look at those two lies. Surely if you eat the fruit of the tree, you will not surely die. You're not going to die. I see here Satan telling Eve, God does not mean what he says. I firmly believe that God says what He means, and it means what it says. I, 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 but you're not going to die if you eat of that tree. 
There's no way Satan was wrong, as he always is. But I think we need to realize that Satan will use our thinking, our minds today, in order to get us to believe that, oh, we can do this and still be a Christian. I wish I had a dollar for every time that somebody has come to me and asked me a question, can I do this and still be a Christian? There's some doubt in their mind. There is some doubt in their mind. And we need to realize that if we have to ask, if there's doubt in our mind, if we have to ask if this is okay to do and still be a Christian, then it's best not to do it. It's best not to do it. The second lie that I find in Genesis, the third chapter, God knows that when you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will be like God himself. I think this idea of self elevation, let's put it that way, is present in many, many things. I don't know how many of you happen to know that the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, teaches that as we are now, God once was. And as God is now, we will begin, we, we will develop as God. In other words, they believe that the person living today, if they follow the ways of the Mormonists, or the Brigham Young, that they will become as God is now. Nothing to be further from the scripture. And there are many people that believe that they have the total authority over their own lives. It's me. I'll do what I want to do regardless of what other people think. I, I, I don't know how many people have said, it's my body. I'll do what I want with it. And it's none of your business. That's a quote I've heard many times. I think we ought to realize that every one of us, regardless whether we're a Christian or not, are going to have to give account of ourselves to God for the things that we do in this life. So we see that there are a lot of things, and by the way, let me just go a little bit further. Many, many years ago, in my studies, I, I have rejected the common view. This is an opinion. I'm going to and emphasize that. The common view of the origin of Satan. I do not believe that Satan was ever in the favor of God. I do not believe that. And the reason for it, Jesus himself said Satan was a liar from the beginning. John wrote in 1 John 3, 8, and I've referred to this before, that Satan was a sinner from the beginning. If he was a liar and a sinner from the beginning, how could he ever have been in the favor of God? I don't believe that. I do believe that Satan was cast out of heaven. But only when Jesus ascended into heaven. Where he, there was a battle in heaven at that time, war in heaven. Satan was cast down to earth. And he that accused us day and night was replaced by our advocate, Jesus Christ. Occurring at the time of his ascension. Okay, let's look real quickly at my notes here. Satan uses diversion in order to get us away from uh, the will of God. I, I, one of the verses of Scripture that really bothers me, that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. 
Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine under them. Satan uses delusion. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, second verse, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Neither in spirit or nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as the day of the Lord of Christ is at hand. Uh, I've been reviewing some of the things that I want to be using for the church here. And one of the things that really uh, it has interest me is that with one of the videos that I've been watching made an emphasis that every generation from the time of Christ until now has believed that Jesus Christ is coming back in their lifetime. And I, I you look in the history. Uh, Martin Luther believed that. Alexander Campbell, who started the restoration in which we are part, called his newsletter that he put out the millennial harbinger, the hardening time for the thousand year reign of Christ. The 11th chapter of 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and 11th verse of that chapter. For this cause, God shall send strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Jesus himself said, Beware of false prophets which come in you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving in wolves. Just because somebody says they're preaching the gospel of Christ, does not mean that they are. I think he uses doubt. I, we talked to him a couple of weeks ago about how far I, uh, I believe in. We need to realize that we need to get rid of our doubts. We need to put it aside and give ourselves to Jesus Christ. We need to realize that we can't be double-minded. We cannot serve God a man. We need to realize that we've been called out of the darkness for which Satan is uh, over into the marvelous light. And we need to realize that when we delay our coming to Christ, our acceptance of Christ, when we delay our commitment, when we delay our doing the will of God, then we are putting off and doing the will of Satan. Many years ago, I was teaching in a college in, in town. I did the college business. I, I had doing the evening class, and I had a young man. In one class, one person that I was teaching. It. And the Church of God I was having a revival. That's when they were up on Scott Street, in the little Scott Street, a little white shirt. Some of you might remember that. And I invited this young man, who had not been for church for years, to come to church for the revival. And he looked at his schedule and said, I, I don't have the time until Friday this week in order to be able to uh, come to church, but I'll be there Friday night. That Friday night, I stayed outside while the church began. Alan Duffy was in the shop. I don't know who was preaching the revival. I waited, I waited, and I waited. He didn't show up. It was Sunday morning when the newspaper was delivered. I saw where he was in an automobile accident Friday night. And he was killed. I don't know, I would refuse to say whether uh, he uh, was prepared to meet God at that time or not. I, I can't say that. That has bothered me. All I have tomorrow, I'll wait until then. I'll wait until then. There's danger in delay. There's danger in delay. I think Satan oftentimes will tell us, don't become a Christian today. Don't give your life to Christ today. Don't do what you need to do. You have tomorrow to do it. And we all have a tendency to put off those things that we don't need to do. And I think Satan uses it extensively. I want you to know that 
If you have in your heart a desire to be a Christian, to be more dedicated, to be more committed, and you don't do it now, tomorrow will never come. If you have a desire to talk to somebody about their soul, and don't do it now, tomorrow will never come. I say this as I think, think of this. I think of the many of my loved ones, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren that need to make a decision. I think about people that come in my influence that need to make a decision. Your husbands, your wives, your children, your grandchildren, where are they? Give yourself to Jesus Christ totally without reservation. And drive a nail in the coffin of Satan, so to speak. That we might be able to give ourselves totally to him. We're going to be singing a song of invitation. Him never saw me intended yet. <laughs> the weather never was. Uh, first verse only. If there's any here that needs to make a decision. Don't delay, do it now.